Hello everyone, it's Dylan from Yu-Gi-Oh! Everything, and welcome back to another Yu-Gi-Oh! video. This time we will be going over my 10 favorite field spell cards from the various Yu-Gi-Oh! animes. A field spell is a continuous spell card that in most cases changes the entire aesthetic of a dueling field. We got introduced to a new type of field spell in Arc 5, cards called Field Magic. These cards change the entire arena, usually without any sort of special effect that a traditional field spell has. For the purpose of this list, I will be including Arc 5's Field Magic cards, as well as the more well-known traditional field spells. I will be basing this list off of personal enjoyment of the field spells, the aesthetic that they brought, and the overall symbolism of the cards. I hope you all leave your own list down below in the comments, and enjoy the video. Kicking off this list is my girl Aki's Black Garden. We see Aki use Black Garden a couple of times early in the 5D's anime. Both of the instances she uses this card are in the Season 1 tournament arc, once against Gil Ransberg and once against Commander Koda, Episodes 16 and 22 respectively. When Black Garden is activated, we see both duelists trapped within a cage of thorns and vines, which I always thought was a really cool aesthetic. I also thought the symbolism of the card perfectly fit Aki, or better known at that time as the Black Rose Witch. When you think of a garden, one of the first words that comes to mind is beautiful or pretty. We don't often associate flowers and plants with negative emotions or adjectives. As we all know, Aki used a plant-based deck, and her days as the Black Rose Witch are pretty synonymous with a card like Black Garden. Both the card and her persona symbolize a deteriorating innocence and beauty that they once had. That's why I think it makes sense we don't see Black Garden used anymore after Aki ditches her Black Rose persona. Regardless, I always love the symbolism and design of the field spell, and it ranks 10 on my list. Sticking with Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds for this next one, we have the field spell Spiderweb. This field spell was used by Dark Signer Roger Godwin during his duels against Yusei. What I loved about this card is how perfectly it fit with Roger's deck. His Earthbound Immortal is a spider, he uses a spider deck, and what is a perfect stage for a spider's nest? A spider web, of course. The field spell basically locks your opponent's monsters in defense position after they attack, as long as that monster is a non-insect. I really dislike spiders, as I know most people do. I mean, walking through an actual spider web, especially at night, never fails to make my skin crawl. I feel like I have bugs all over me for the next few minutes afterwards. I felt a field spell like this and just Rudger's deck in general added to the creepiness of the Dark Signers arc, at least for me, and it made for a perfect battleground during the two Yusei and Rudger Godwin duels. Coming in 8th is actually our first field magic from the Arc 5 anime, which as I mentioned earlier works a little differently than traditional field spells. Action field magic cards change the entire battlefield during a duel and gives the field a really cool aesthetic. They usually have no major effects on them like traditional field spells do that affect the course of the duel. One of my favorites from Arc 5 is known as Cosmo Sanctuary, which is used when Yuya takes on Hokuto in the early stages of the anime. The entire duel takes place on what looks like a moon that is filled with really cool looking monuments. The overall aesthetic of this duel in space is honestly really cool, and the action field spells were one of my favorite things about Arc 5. The stage also fits Hokuto so well, since his monsters had an outer space vibe to them. It was basically like Hokuto was a football team and they were playing on their home field, and our protagonist Yuya was the away team trying to come and pull off an upset. It added a really good layer to a very early duel in the show, and it's one of the most visually pleasing field magics there are, especially if you are a fan of space. Up next is our first Yu-Gi-Oh! GX field spell, and that is the classic Skyscraper. One of the most well-known and most used field spells on this list, Skyscraper was a go-to card of the main protagonist, Judai or Jaden, throughout GX. It helped him win many duels throughout the show, as it allowed any elemental hero monster to gain 1,000 attack points, as long as it was attacking a monster who had higher attack points. It's a card that I am convinced Chrono sees in his nightmares multiple times a week. When the card is activated, we see a bunch of buildings shoot out from the field, and usually whatever E hero is set to attack takes to the top of the tallest building. I have no idea why, but this card's aesthetic always reminded me of Gotham City, with elemental hero Flame Wingman resembling Batman. I don't know, it probably sounds really weird, and maybe it's because of the trap hero signal that reminds me of the Batman symbol, but I am a sucker for superheroes and those kinds of aesthetics, and maybe it's why I love Jaden's deck so much. Regardless, I love this field spell, and it takes up the 7th spot on my list. If there's one thing I like more than anything else in this world, 
it's candy. I used to eat bags of Swedish fish daily when I was younger. I constantly crave Carvel or Cold Stone or any sort of ice cream after dinner. I have probably the world's worst sweet tooth, so it should be no surprise to anyone to see the action field magic Sweets Island make this list. Sweets Island is another Arc 5 field magic that shows up pretty early in the show when Sora duels Yuya for the first time. While Sora's monsters blend into the aesthetic really well, it's the scenery of this field spell that makes it rank so high for me. I don't think there is any field spell in the world that I would love to enter more than this one. The whole thing reminds me of a room in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. While sadly Sweets Island is not a real place, it greatly appeals to the sweet tooth I have and has always been one of my favorite action magics from Yu-Gi-Oh! Arc 5. Just cracking the top 5 is another GX field spell, and that is Fujiwara Yusuke's Clear World. Fujiwara was a Season 4 exclusive character, and so if you have only watched the GX dub, you have probably never seen him or this card in the anime. While this card only ranks 5th for me, it probably ranks number 1 as the coolest card design out of all the ones on this list. To see the outline of Fujiwara with that crystal hanging above him is such an intimidating and cool design. What I love more about this card is how it has a different effect based on whatever card type you have. If you have a light monster, you must show your hand to your opponent at all times. If you have two or more dark monsters, you cannot declare an attack. They are all debilitating effects that makes its usage very unique. The symbolism with this field spell is also great, because the whole theme of the show during its usage was about drowning people in their own horrors and despair. This is a card that, no matter which monster you summon, is going to negatively affect you somehow. I also think the animation of the field spell is really interesting. It kind of reminds me of a place above the clouds, almost like heaven, except there's just nothing but emptiness on a flat plane. I'm sure it would be really creepy to duel in that aesthetic, and it just adds to the emotion of Fujiwara's duel. Coming in fourth is an action magic that I do not expect to be on many people's lists, but it's one that I have always loved, and that is Infinite Bridge, the setting for Yuzu and Masumi's rematch in Arc 5. I can't really put my finger on it, but I love how this field magic looks. It's pretty simplistic, it's just a bunch of bridges and platforms that all connect somehow that seemingly, and implied by the card name, go on forever. I think it would be such a cool and kind of nerve-wracking place to duel on. One blow from a monster could send you flying over the edge of the bridge into an infinite abyss below. We almost see this happen as Yuzu is left grasping onto the edge of the bridge throughout the duel. I feel like that element really added to the intensity of this duel. I also like to think it symbolizes endless possibilities during one's life. When you think about all the different paths you can go or take with your life, it can seem very intimidating, kind of like looking at all of these bridges and pathways. However, it's also kind of comforting, knowing that if you want to change something for the better, there is always a route to do that. I think that meaning also matches up with what Yuzu was going through personally at the time of this duel, but I'm going to cut myself off there before I keep overanalyzing and rambling about one field spell. Taking the bronze is my favorite action field magic from Arc 5, Future City Heartland. There is so much about this field spell that I love. First of all, this was before we knew a great deal about the details of the other dimensions in Arc 5, meaning when this happened in real time, the community freaked out, realizing that the dimensions might be set in the previous Yu-Gi-Oh! animes, which was kind of, sort of true. The aesthetic of Heartland is naturally beautiful, but what happens to the field during this duel is amazingly symbolic. This is the setting of maybe the best duel we have had in the last few years, Sora versus Shun during the tournament. The field is purposely selected to anger Shun, as this was the site of the attacks on his homeland. As the duel goes on, we see the field slowly start to be destroyed, which is symbolic of what actually happened to the real Heartland just a short while ago. It becomes apparent to the viewer that Sora is actually a villain, who is a part of the attacks on Heartland City. Eventually, Shun defeats Sora, but at the cost of the entire city of Heartland being set ablaze and destroyed, which horrified the onlookers of the duel. The setting felt so real, and it was just a perfect touch to an already nearly perfect duel, making it one of my favorite field spells ever in Yu-Gi-Oh! Taking the runner-up spot is maybe the most well-known field spell on this list, the Seal of Ori Kalkos, a card in which its very essence is associated with pure evil and corruption. 
I will confidently say that there has never been a more important field spell in the history of the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime. The seal played a massive role in Season 4 of Duel Monsters. When activated, it would send out a beam of green light that would circle in on whoever was dueling. The loser of the duel would lose their soul, and Darts, the main villain and orchestrator of the season, would gain another offering for the Great Leviathan, meaning every duel was essentially a win-win for him. Whenever a monster would be summoned within the seal, it would often become possessed by the evil spirits of the Orichalcos, giving them a more evil and sinister look. We actually see a desperate Yami Yugi even turn to the seal's power, corrupting him and leading him to lose against Raphael in what was one of the most shocking results in the original show. It's also the reason younger Yugi loses his soul, and it leads to a lot of development between the Pharaoh and his other self. The seal represents so much, and it's one of the most iconic and important field spells in all of Yu-Gi-Oh! It takes the silver medal for me on this list. Coming in first place as the best field spell in my opinion throughout the entire Yu-Gi-Oh! anime is Bakura's Dark Sanctuary. We see this field spell animated and used during Bakura and Yugi's quarterfinals duel on the Kaiba Court blimp during Battle City. The entire beginning of this duel is so unique as it's just a ploy by Bakura to get Dark Necrofear in the grave so he can activate the field spell Dark Sanctuary. Dark Sanctuary engulfs the entire blimp and this duel goes off the creepiness meter immediately. The field spell is perfect. It looks so disturbing as we see eyes and mouth, sometimes a mixture of both lifelike and staring at everyone. There is also a spirit within the Dark Sanctuary that attaches itself to Yugi's monsters, draining life points from him every time he attacks, and in turn, restoring Bakura's life points. Eventually, Slifer the Sky Dragon comes out and makes its debut, and completely cuts through the Dark Sanctuary spell, freeing everyone from its haunting bubble. Once the Sanctuary is gone, Bakura is no more, as he loses the duel to Yugi. But the portion of the duel that was within this horrifying bubble was so memorable to me, and this duel has always been one of my favorites. Dark Sanctuary, in my opinion, is the coolest field spell we have ever seen animated and used in the Yu-Gi-Oh! franchise. And that about wraps it up. Thank you all so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed. This was a video requested by my Egyptian god tier patron, Sin Cloud. Big thank you to Nolan for suggesting this video idea. And please feel free to leave your top 10 lists for field spells if you want to exclusively do action field magics from Arc 5 or just traditional field spells or a mixture of both like I did. Feel free to do whatever format you want down below. I am really excited to hear from all of you. Thank you again so much for watching and a special thank you to my platinum tier patrons Alexa Baker, Glenn McCookin, Jorge Carrillo, James Rose, Samuel Stark, Thomas Adderley, Horace May, Goosey Q, Vincent Vanderveen, Jordan Osceola, Smith620, Gladiator, Frost Reaper, Jorge Leon, and Blue Maiden28, and do my diamond tier patrons Jesse Wood, Melinda Phantom, and Ben Hartz, and do my Egyptian god tier patrons Joss Rivers and Sin Cloud. Thank you to everyone who supports me on Patreon, who is a YouTube channel member, and who just watches my videos, because without you guys, I would not be able to do this. Thank you all so much for watching. I will talk to you down below, and I hope you have an amazing day.